Okay, let's get some content. Yeah, I can vlog in bed. We've got a vlog to get out today. Today's the 2nd of September. George is on holiday in Sardinia, kite surfing. So it'd be a good idea to do some vlogging from two different countries. So we're gonna, gonna run, 5k run this morning. Uh, I don't know why I agreed to this. So Pat's challenged me to a run on holiday. Thanks for that, Pat. I uh, went out last night, pretty tired. You broke me 11 times this morning to get me up. We need to get some fitness stuff done. We really, I really need to do some fitness. Why are you making me do this? For the vlog. For the vlog! Put my running stuff at the end of the bed. So I didn't have any excuses in the morning. I'm good at excuses. I've just realized I don't have my running shoes. So... No excuses, gonna have to go down to the beach, do a 5k on the beach. I'm probably eating way too close to my exercise, but I hate training on an empty stomach. Clock set, see you on the other side, Pat. Jump right into it, here we go. Say no! I think that means just under, just under halfway. Walk it off, walk it off. Run done. Time, 26 minutes, 30 something. Let's go for a dip. Okay, Q&A time. Let's do this. Okay, first off, a little disclaimer. Um, thanks for all the questions. There were tons. There was loads to get through, and I'm probably not going to get through them all. Well, I'm definitely not going to get through them all. Now, I can empathize with most of these questions that you guys have put in, and therefore, I can offer some insight. And if I can help, that's great. I'm also well aware that I'm going to be speaking to a very really broad spectrum of athletes. Uh, some of them are going to be at the top of their game, and some of them might well just be starting out. And I was a little bit reserved. I was thinking hard as to whether I had uh, any weight to say anything on some of these subjects. Some people are probably gonna disagree with what I'm saying, some people are gonna disregard it entirely, and if, if, if they wanna do that, it's completely their prerogative. But everything I'm gonna be saying is first-hand experience. All the evidence is completely anecdotal. Okay, first question. Loads of questions on uh, when I started rowing and what got me into rowing. <clears throat> what got me into rowing? Um, this is how it went. So it was first day back at school, I was, 14 at the time, um, we were all sat in sports hall, and then the head PE teacher says, okay, football that corner, hockey that corner, uh, netball that corner, rowing that corner. Now, I was speaking to my friends at the time, uh, we were all sort of just like sat there in a huddle, and um, before I could continue the conversation, everyone dispersed, and I wasn't done with the conversation, so I followed them into that corner, I sort of sat there for a bit, um, when I sat there, the the coaches sort of saw me and they were like, oh, okay, Pat's here. I used to just play football on the sides. That was it, that was the opening of the can of worms that is rowing. Uh, another really popular question was, what is your favorite boat to row in? Um, and this was tied in, uh, would you like to be back in an eight or would you like to stick to small boats? An eight is by far my favorite boat to row in, especially as a stroke man. Um, it goes the fastest. I am starting to develop a strong liking towards Coxus 4, but I'm pretty sure eight will always be my favorite boat to be in. Okay, next question. Um, have you guys officially started your season? Um, no. I'm wary about picking uh, the correct time for starting. Uh, and this is because I appreciate that once you start, it's, it's going to be tough. <clears throat> and to do well, you have to be consistent all, all year round. I'm also wary about um, getting to a stage where we're just pushing that start date further and further down the line. I don't think that will happen. I think we'll start end of September, start of October. Um, but the videos will continue. Is it worth uh, learning to scull if your club mainly races in sweep boats? Uh, short answer, yeah. Now and again, I, I, would, I do actually enjoy taking out a single scull and just going out on my own. It's like quite calm and relaxing. It, it can be. Um, and then it also depends on what your goal is. Say if you're, if you're looking to trial, if you're looking to row for uh, your country, um, being able to single scull, you can usually come in handy for the selection process.
I think anyway. I'm thinking of going to Newcastle University and was wondering how you found it and how is the rowing because I also row and would love to continue that through university. Okay. Obviously, I only rowed in Newcastle for six months. Um, whilst I did make the second eight, uh, I didn't do a whole year of training. So just consider that when you're listening to what I'm saying at the moment. For, for people that are already um, are rowers and they join, the Newcastle training program is very much set up for people that um, want to succeed at rowing. But it will, it's an intense program and it's hard work, but it will maximize your chances of, of succeeding and um, getting some, some silverware. Fleepy or Empacker? Hudson. Advice on which you need to row at? Um, okay, I'm gonna assume that you're looking, uh, you're asking about which are the best unis at rowing. I'll name off a few and there's plenty, but uh, Newcastle, Brooks, University of London, Imperial, um, Edinburgh, Glasgow, there's, there's quite a lot out there, but you, you'll just want to check the book's results. Um, the other piece of advice I'd give is don't let um, the standard of rowing be the only thing that dictates where you're going to row at uni. University is a three year or four year, five year period that's, um, that's sectioned off for you to adjust to something that's a lot more similar to adult life. And it's also, well, predominantly it's, it's for learning and it's for um, being able to go out and get a job afterwards. Um, now, I'm not saying that uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who think that um, rowing is going to be a big part of their their choice as to which uni to go to, but that, that's fine. Don't Just don't let it completely dictate where you're going to choose. Just remember that you may well have to retire at 60, 65. Um, a rowing career will not last that long, so just, just think long term. Uh, there's lots of fun to be had at university, it won't all be rowing based. Favourite pre-race food? Uh, banana. Get that potassium in. Okay, Torm says, starting at Newcastle, September 2019, how did you find the transition from A-levels to uni life and do you have any tips? Okay, thanks for the question, Torm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, the transition from going to A-levels to uni, in terms of your, in terms of your academic work, uh, it's a lot more autonomous. Um, no one's gonna be telling you what to do as much, so it's very much down to you to put in the work. Um, A-levels you get all sorts of feedback from your teachers and maybe your parents. But I loved it. I loved the transition from from A-levels to uni. Are you sticking with just club racing or will you try to advance to international racing in your rowing career? Uh, I'm not too sure about what it takes to become an international oarsman but I appreciate it's probably tremendous hard work but I'm pretty sure that's something I, I don't want to go after. How do you come up with a training plan? Okay, um, the training plan that we used um, for the season just gone, um, it wasn't really much of a training plan. It was very erg based to start off with and these were ergs that we both responded well to, that we, we sort of enjoyed, re relatively speaking. And that just helped us stay on track. We, we made sure that as long as you don't mind the training, you can stay consistent. In terms of picking which ergs to do, uh, I guess me and George have been part of a, a few different programs uh, down the line, so we could we could pick out a few good workouts that would keep us going. I'm just about to start uni, but I'm worried that the training and academic work together may become overwhelming. Yeah, that's a fair question. Uh, the truth is that when you take up a sport like rowing, uh, well, it completely depends on where you're going to row, but say you're rowing uh, once or twice a day, your life is going to become uh, more one-dimensional. You're going to have to um, make time and put that time towards uh, rowing towards your sport. Usually the time that you put into rowing should eat up your free time. Uh, quite often that doesn't happen obviously but um, it can definitely be done. You just have to make the time. It's, it's more hard work and towards rowing events you will find uh, the pressure increases. Obviously towards summer you're starting to race more and you, you're gonna have exams around the corner. As long as you stay sort of organized and focused you should be able to do it. Most memorable moment at uni. I don't want to say something cliche, so obviously graduation was great. First day was obviously very memorable. But I would say some of the best moments were when in, in the library revising with our friends where we were all sort of losing our minds. Some of those moments are great. Some of those moments were good fun. Number one tip against a bad mood. Um, I would say Things you want to be thinking about in terms of regulating your mood. Um, 
make sure you get enough sleep and make sure you have a consistent sleep pattern. So make sure you're waking up uh, consistently at the same time every day, near enough. Um, stay well hydrated. Try and keep your food intake consistent as well. Make sure you're eating enough food because um, your insulin levels can have an effect on your mood too. Are you ever going to change rowing clubs? Um, maybe, I'm not on the lookout for any crew in particular because like, like I said before, I, I don't let the rowing, um, I don't let rowing dictate where, what I'm doing with the rest of my life. So if I do end up moving cities and I find a club that suits me and suits my working life and suits my, um, my social life, then it could be within a shout. What is the club scene in England compared to high level school rowing? In terms of in terms of boat speed, I think it's probably quite similar. I think high level school rowing is probably one of the most impressive things about British rowing in general. Um, the talent that schools can produce is getting starting to become pretty scary. So I'd say the top the top clubs will probably be similar speeds to the top schools. Take that with a pinch of salt. Okay, another really common question I've had um, is how to stay motivated. It's a big question, um, so I'd unpack it a bit. I'll give a few tips. Always set a goal, um, a goal to work towards. Um, I think discrete erg scores and uh, picking a boat you want to get into work pretty well. So you've got a, like a tangible target. And then I would also say for people that struggle with motivation on the erg. I think like a common question is how to stay motivated on the erg. Um, I've got some good advice for this. Uh, for me, I would say you need to pick a score uh, that you can definitely achieve each time you're about to step on the erg. I would say for when you're, when you're training, um, this, can't, this probably isn't the same for an erg test, but when you're training, you need to pick a score that you really do think that you can achieve. Um, I think it's important to start out low, to aim. I think it's important to aim high, but start out low. Um, Aim low in that you need to take incremental steps to get to where you want to be. Uh, and I think being able to set a score that you can get and then achieving it and doing the same again the next day and the next day and the next day is how you build confidence on the erg. I don't think you want to be aiming up here and just missing it each time. That can really knock your confidence. I think your outright aim should just be that you're going to work hard and you're going to be consistent. Um, people get very caught up in the erg scores and I think that can have a bad knock-on effect. It also takes a lot of humility to be able to aim low. Uh, you could sometimes feel a lot of pressure from other people in your crew or in, in your squad to, to be hitting the score. But at the end of the day, you're going to go fastest if you can get to the fastest you can be, not necessarily if you're beating other people. The good thing about the erg is that you get direct feedback. You get you can tell when you're incrementally improving and being able to sit on the erg each day and chip away each time is a great feeling especially for the low rate longer pieces um, it's more just about getting on and doing the that block of work rather than the scores to an extent anyway when you started rowing did you ever feel like you weren't good enough and that you wouldn't get to an elite level okay i'm not at an elite level um i think when i first started rowing i was nurtured for want of a better word i was i i, I was incorporated into a, a sort of a nine-man squad quite well and it meant that i had something to aim for but i would never compare myself to the elites when i'm not when i'm nowhere near i still don't now is this because i put elite sculling in the last uh, last vlog okay what 2k time did you need to get into the rowing university team um i didn't need a 2k time to get into the seat that I got in. I was the stroke man for the Newcastle second eight two or three years ago, two years ago. Um, there was no score that got me that seat. Uh, what the score, the 2k score did get me was uh, the opportunity for a seat race. Um, if you put down good scores they'll give you an opportunity to break into a crew. Uh, the 2k test is just one metric that's used to uh, analyze uh, an oarsman's uh, boat speed. Um, don't rely upon it too much. Um, it's it's definitely an important one. Uh, sometimes a monster 2K will get you into a boat for sure. But um, it's just one way of analyzing what an athlete can contribute to a boat. Um, you want to also be thinking about your commitment to the training program in general. Uh, turn up on time, working hard in the weight room, just getting along well with the crew, getting along well with your coaches. All that matters as well. So. Um, yeah, what, what the 2K did do was got me the seat race that then got me into the seat that I wanted. Have you ever rowed for GB? Um, nope. I got to the final stage uh, to row as a junior, GB junior, but didn't make it. 
I could probably talk about that more in a future vlog. I've saved a few questions for me and George to do. This is gonna be interesting. Yes, here we go. Right. Oh, it looks blue skies there. First question. Right, where do, I've already sort of answered this, but where do you get your motivation from when you're on an erg? Probably Henley, that was the biggest one for us, I think. Yeah. Being used one, being, having a competition with you, but mainly just getting Henley. Okay, so in a certain event. Again, I sort of touched on like tangible goals, and yeah, getting to Henley's obviously one. Okay, right, good, good. This is a good question. Who's the most lazy out of me or you? I was gonna say you, but we both have our days. We both have our days where we are just yeah. Do yeah, we're both like. I, I think you, just because I think I do more, so I do more in as well, and I do think I like going to the gym more than you. I'm better in the morning. That's, that's a big thing. I definitely, I'm so much better than you in the morning. Got in that hard there, haven't you? I'd say, I, I wouldn't say that's true. I would say we're both, we, we can both be lazy in our own right and yeah, I agree. put the knife down. Okay, least favourite erg? 2k or 5k, but we don't really do 5k, so 2k for sure. 2k? That's a shame. Most races we're going to do next year are going to be over 2k, you know that, yeah? Yeah, I do. But I can be on other ones. Erg or boat? Boat is effort sometimes, but probably boat. More satisfying. Yeah, it depends what boat I'm in. If, and if, if, if it's going... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if it's going well, then I'll pick, I'll pick boat. But we were pretty heavy on the ergs last year, weren't we? Who handles their alcohol the worst? I want to say you. Go on. Yeah, what reasons do you mean? Hey, right. Uh, I actually really know, but I. Yeah, that's what I thought. We don't really get that bad. We don't really get that bad. Yeah, well, I think we can both handle. Like, like, is the question you put in camp? It's camp every day. Yeah, 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 that's true. That's very true. You're pretty, pretty similar. We're usually on a similar level, and then there's, then there's camp. We... The other question are you single? I can answer this one for you. George is really single. He is. He, he's really single, like, really single. like leave, leave some for the rest of us, he's that single. Do you have anything to add on the matter? Ah, oh, he's gone. Okay, the final question is, how is Taco? Wait, I'm gonna go get him actually. A lot of people have asked about how Taco is, so. I'm lit. I'm lit. What time's your dinner? I've got him. I've got him. Got him. Let me see my boy. Let me see my boy. Yeah, there he is. Where's George? Good He's man. on this side. Hello. Nice. Do you want to name a good... Do you, see you later, mate. Do you want to name a good Erg song? The Shame, Fleetwood Mac. The Shame by Fleetwood Mac. The Shame. The Shame. Hey, The Shame. Ah! Last time talking to you, more time talking to girls. Talking to girls? Yeah, seeing as I'm so fucking single, talk to you. That's definitely going in the vlog.